Hey everybody, Eric Nathy with MountModernLife.com. Today we want to touch base on our time zone clocks up here in the front. Now when people come over to visit, it's generally the first project they bring up and it's mainly because it's up here in the front and it's a real focal point. Uh, for me, it's definitely one of my favorite projects for a different reason and that's because right after we had got them put up, I was in the middle of renovating some of the other things and I was having a really rough day. Things just weren't lining up. So I sat down on the sofa, closed my eyes and was just trying to get my calm back and in the background I could hear the ticking of all the clocks and it just uh, it made it soothing for me to sit there and just take it in and uh, it helped me get back on track and take on the rest of the renovations uh, and there's been many times since then where I sit down and just listen to the ticket listen to the ticking of the uh, second hands uh, it's really awesome not to mention that it does tell us what the time zones are which helps out a lot if we're calling family members in other time zones or if we're traveling and we just want to kind of keep up to date with it but uh, before I get into how we made the time zone clocks and the whole setup, I wanted to show you a quick picture of what this front looked like beforehand so you can have an idea. Quite a big difference, huh? You can definitely see that there's been some changes made. Uh, we're really happy with the way that it turned out. But before I dive into too deep on how we did the clocks and the labels, I do want to let you know that there were a couple steps that we needed to take before we even got to that stage. Um, one is, is that you probably saw in the picture that before this middle cabinet actually came down to about here, and that was in order to support the TV itself. Um, but we actually took the TV down, uh, which you can, uh, if you go to the website, we have a post over there on how we did it. And we also have a video up on YouTube if uh, you're looking to remove the TV in the front of your unit. But anyway, we took the TV down and we moved it to the back. And then when we did that, we also looked up here and realized that we wanted to see more of our window. We didn't want this big uh, eyesore to come all the way down here. So what we did next was we actually took this whole middle section here and we just removed it. And that left the two side cabinets still installed, but this middle section gone. And then I grabbed that and I took it over to the garage did some measuring and essentially cut this cabinet directly in half, put it back together and installed it up here. Now, once we had it back in here, there was a big opening here in the front and it showed just a ton of space back there. Now, before that space wasn't accessible because the TV didn't move at all. So we figured since we did that, we might as well make uh, take advantage of the extra storage space. So then we ended up taking and building this front cabinet. And instead of just being a flat sheet that was permanently installed, we actually put it on hinges. So this opens up so we're able to access that extra space and store some things up there. Now, after we had the TV down and we had shrank this, then we needed to paint everything and get it white, which is what we did. Um, and then it was on to making our time zone clocks. Now, originally, Katie's idea for the time zone clocks was to make four of our own clocks and then the labels as well. But then one day she was cruising through Target and she saw these awesome copper clocks. And I think she might have put them in the cart and put them back on the shelf three or four times before ultimately deciding not to go with them. And it was kind of twofold. One was that the ones she found, there were only three and we needed four. And then the other thing was that they actually didn't have numbers on them. And I don't know about you guys, but for me and Katie, when we look up at clocks real quick to get the time, it's a lot easier if the numbers are just there. So... Anyway, she put those back, but then as she continued walking, she actually came across these. And they had numbers, and there was also four of them. The only problem was that they were in brass, and we knew we wanted them to be more of a copper color. So she ended up getting them anyway, and uh, we were both pretty excited about it. Her, because she was in the store seeing it. Me, because I'm getting text messages along the way. But she brought them home. They were the wrong color, so what we needed to do was paint them. So in order to do that, we actually taped off the front piece uh, where the glass is so that no paint would get on it. And then a little trick if you're going to be painting something uh, that, like clocks or anything like this is if you give the outside that you want to paint a little bit of a sanding, it'll make that surface a little rougher and just help the paint stick to it. So we taped off the front glass pieces, gave it a little light sanding on the outside, and then we painted them all. Now, uh, once you rip the tape off, sometimes paint just makes its way onto the glass um, and it's 
sometimes just impossible to avoid. So a little trick you may want to use is the magic eraser. And that's because the magic eraser is just that, it's magic. Um, a lot of times with glass and mirrors and things like that, if you use the magic eraser, it'll just rub that paint right off. So, you know, a little tip if uh, you're painting something with glass or mirrors, hopefully that helps out. But anyway, so we taped it off, sanded it, painted it, and then the clocks were ready to go. So then we brought them over and we were getting ready to install them. And we were thinking about using some sort of command hooks. But then uh, after we started thinking about it, we realized that the time zone clocks were up here in the front of the RV, which is right near where we drive. Uh, so we wanted it to be much more secure. So we actually used screws to put them in there. Uh, and we feel really confident with the way they've held up so far when we're driving and parked here. But that about wraps it up for the clocks. So now on to the labels. Uh, they were relatively easy. We actually just used wood um, that we had lying around and we cut them into the same size pieces. And then at that point we had the actual um, pieces of wood for the labels, but we didn't have the lettering. So Katie pulled out her silhouette machine, which if you're not familiar with the silhouette machine, but you like doing uh, crafty activities, uh, it may be something you want to check out. It makes things a little bit easier when you're working with lettering or graphics, things like that. But anyway, she put the words into the program and then printed them out on the silhouette. And then the silhouette actually cuts out the letters. And then we just took the letters and adhered them right to the wood slices that we had. And then that about wraps it up for our time zone clock. It's a really easy project, project and uh, we think that it's uh, definitely a pretty awesome project. I know that when I look up here at it, I get pretty excited because it's just, it's just a cool project and I'm really happy with it. Um, but uh, if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about the cabinet doors, uh, just uh, we'll be coming out with a post and a video soon on how we made those. Those are also relatively easy and can make a big difference for you if you're needing to put something up there or something along those lines. But uh, if you guys have any questions or comments about our time zone clocks, definitely feel free to leave them below or head over to the post. I'm going to have a link in the description for you where it goes into more detail on every step we took and things like that. Uh, and check that out. But uh, anyway, thank you much for swinging by today and we'll see you guys again soon.